Hey, Jonathan here from AJ and Smart. I'm in the AJ and Smart office, the West office, and we usually don't do videos where you can see what's actually going on in the office. And um, we just thought today, let's just do it handheld. Yeah, and yeah, uh, uh, Callum needs to awkwardly follow me. So today we're gonna talk about the difference between design thinking and design sprints. And I have a pretty clear, simple answer for you. So let's go to the flip chart. So we're at the flip chart. Here's the clear difference between design thinking and design sprints. You never have to worry about it again or wonder about it again. You just can just use this explanation if someone asks you, okay? So design thinking, I'm gonna maybe, design thinking, it's gonna be a bit loud in the office because we haven't shut the place down for filming. It doesn't matter. Design sprints, okay? Design thinking is like, let's say we're going to a cooking class, right? We're, we're trying to learn how to cook and we're trying to learn how to cook good stuff, okay? Now this is an analogy for making product. So we're learning how to cook. Design thinking is like learning how to specifically cook, for example, pasta correctly. Pasta. <laughs> it's like learning how to uh, cut onions correctly. It's like learning how to use a knife correctly. It's like all of the individual elements that you need to learn to cook a meal, you learn in design thinking. Design thinking is really like this philosophy, this mindset, and this toolkit. So you're learning all the different exercises, all the different things, but how you put that together is sort of up to you. Now, imagine you were asked to make, you know, as a team, imagine you were asked to make like a really great truffle pasta or something, and it was just five of you there, you all know how to do this stuff, and now make a great truffle pasta. Well, that would take quite a long time because you don't really have a recipe and you don't really know who's supposed to do what. So everyone will be flailing around. No one really knows what great looks like. Nobody really knows what the end result is supposed to look like. You kind of be all over the place. And that's where something like the design sprint comes in. And the design sprint is really simple. It's a recipe. So, Here's how you make the thing. Based on these tools, based on these ingredients, here's a recipe for executing something like a truffle pasta. And it's also a really clear list of who does what, right? It's, it's super basic. So if you're learning how to cook, you're gonna need these two ingredients. You're gonna need these two skills. You need to know how to actually cook things. So, you know, how to cut onions, how to use a knife. But then you're also gonna need the recipe, right? You're also gonna need the step-by-step -step guide for getting this thing done. And that's what the design sprint is. The design sprint is a recipe that takes the mindset and learnings from design thinking and it applies it to a step-by-step -step process. So again, thinking about it as, you know, the design thinking, if you went and learned just design thinking, Yes, you would be able to create a persona. Yes, you would be able to do a lot of the individual exercises, but you wouldn't have this clear, exact step-by-step -step recipe if someone said, hey, validate a product for me. Then you would have to figure out which bits and pieces do I pull together to make my own recipe. And if you're an extremely skilled design thinking expert, then you do know how to do this. But most people in most companies need a recipe given to them so that they can execute it, a robust, bulletproof, battle-tested recipe. And that's what this, the design sprint is. I'm gonna say sprint so you actually see it. So really to summarize, the design sprint is a recipe. It's a clear step-by-step -step recipe and also an, a, a sort of rule set for who does what. So, you know, if you've got three people in the kitchen, this person does this, this person does this, this person does this. There's also timing and everything would be clear so you'd know exactly what the meal will look like in the end. And design thinking is the mindset and the theory behind all of that. And you really need these two things together to work together if you want to actually, let's say, do an innovative product or create a new product. You need to understand the relationship between these two things. Now, <clears throat> one question that people will ask, could you validate a product with the design sprint without knowing the theories behind design thinking? Well, the answer is yes. It's like buying a cookbook from Jamie Oliver and there's a cool complex meal, 
but all you have to do is read it step by step to execute it. Now, maybe you won't cut the onions perfectly. I'm sticking with this food analogy. Maybe you won't cut the onions perfectly. Maybe you won't cook the pasta exactly the exact way it needs to be. But yes, you would be able to make this pasta dish with, if you just have a recipe and know who should do what. But if you, want to, if you just had design thinking on its own, then you really have to be an expert then you really have to understand exactly how to play out these recipes. And so that's really why uh, the design sprint sort of filled this missing piece of the puzzle. If we look at how product design and how sort of innovative product processes worked before, there was, oh, this flip chart is pretty big. There was something like, okay, we're gonna do some you know, design thinking. So that's like almost like the research phase. So we're gonna do design thinking to figure out like the problem, like understand the users, you know, brainstorm and prototype and try out these things and, and really kind of get deep into the, 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 the user challenge. So the design thinking part is really this human centered approach. And then it would almost go from here to into the actual implementation. And there was this missing part of the puzzle, which is how do you actually validate that the product so that's the validation. How do you actually validate that we should even make this in the first place? And design thinking was used for that, but there was no clear recipe for getting there. And that's really what the design sprint is, is this kind of recipe that allows you to take the learnings and the skills and the mindset from design thinking and apply it to a product process. What I really like about the design sprint as well is that it's design thinking, by the way, like looking around AJ and Smart Office, we are clearly fans of design thinking, but it on its own is not super useful without a recipe. So, you know, before when we used to get a project, people would say, hey, can you help us with this new app? We would say yes, and we'd have to go away, look into our design thinking toolkit and think about what sort of recipe will we use for this project? and we would change it every time. So we wouldn't really be able to battle test one recipe. Whereas the design sprint has been this recipe we've been testing over and over and over and over again for years. And we know it is an excellent recipe for validating products, for coming up with new product ideas and for testing things extremely quickly. People are often afraid of doing design thinking because it's for creatives and designers are using design thinking, right? And, and it's one of those things that uh, turns a lot of like stakeholders and their product managers and you know people who are just interested in the business of designing products and making products it kind of turns those people off whereas the design sprint is a very cold step-by-step -step, robust serious process with very little creativity involved so almost anyone in your company will feel comfortable being part of a design sprint process because it has this more strategic and business angle to it as well, rather than design thinking, which is really great for us designers to sort of get everything out on the table. But when it comes to executing and figuring out, should we make this product? What should this product be? Then the design sprint is actually the answer to that question. So hopefully this video helped you out. Uh, let me know if this lo-fi approach was okay. If you look at our other videos, you'll see it's usually set up in a nice environment and everything, but I just didn't have time to do that today. Thanks for watching. I hope you like it. Let me know if you like this lo-fi approach. Let me know if it's okay if we do videos like this sometime. And let me know if the, in the comments if you have a better analogy for the difference between design thinking and design sprints. Thank you so much for watching. Do check us out on LinkedIn. We're going crazy over there. And make sure you also check out workshopper.com if you're interested in workshops like design thinking, like design sprints, check that out. But let's take a look at the office on the way. So this is sort of like the kitcheny, open plan area. Everyone's in workshops right now except for one person there making videos. Uh, we've got one of the meeting rooms here. <laughs> we've got the uh, entering the east office here. All right, so we've got uh, the executive lounge. There we go. And this is the East office. Say hi, everybody. Hi. Hey, Kyle's just not saying hi at all. <laughs> all right, so let's go into this uh, little workshop space and I'm gonna hand this over to Callum and I'm gonna give you a quick explanation on the, oh yeah, look, it's Berlin as well. So you can see, this is the view from this window. That's the, uh, the tower in Berlin.